perfect case of constant pressure on the left, no flow on the right. right? So you'd have to think about it if it was the opposite. Okay? So we're just going to review in the notes real quick. Uh, there are, there's one, a couple, there are details in the notes I didn't go over because I didn't work through all the details for the delta x over half case. And there's also the case where you could have non-constant other material properties like viscosity. Um, and there's, that's covered as well, right? So uh, this is really just talking about the heterogeneity and permeability and how the flow vector is the same, but we can evaluate the flux at the half boundary. I want to go through this kind of quick because I want to do something kind of what I think is fun. We'll see if you guys think it's fun. Um, so ultimately, if, if all you have is um, if all you have is a heterogeneity and the permeability, then you use the, your permeability turns out to be the harmonic mean, and your uh, transmissibility at the boundary turns out to be that. Okay, so we worked through all the details there. For the case of um, heterogeneity in the permeability and non-constant grid block size, and I guess I didn't mention what would be a scenario where you'd want to have non-constant grid blocks? So remember that in these in the grid blocks, the pressure is constant, right? So if you have a gigantic grid block, like for instance, if you had an entire reservoir and it was one grid block, you'd have one pressure in the entire grid block. So to get variations in pressure, you need smaller grid blocks. To get steep variations in pressure, you need really small grid blocks, right? So what would a case be where you have steep variations in pressure in the reservoir? Near a fault, near a wellbore, exactly. So those are two perfect examples of when, you would, when you'd want to have a refined or smaller grids, OK? So if you have smaller grids, uh, you're Delta x at the boundary is just the, the normal average, and and then your uh, the harmonic mean works out to be this for uh, for the permeability. Uh, we didn't talk about area changes, but you can have area changes too, and in that case, you, where you have variability in the area. This really only makes sense in a one-dimensional reservoir, right? You have a variation in an area. Because in a 2D reservoir, your grid blocks have to connect, right? So they, the, the variation in area really only makes sense in a one-dimensional reservoir. Um, but, but it sort of, in that way, it gives you a way to mimic some two-dimensionality with a one-dimensional model. Right? So you can have variations in area. And in that case, um, then in this case, there's variations in permeability, area, and delta x. And so you might set, you might lump the terms together uh, like this, and then you get that guy, and then your transmissibility is in terms of that. Okay, so we, again, we didn't talk about this, and the fluid ver fluid properties can vary block to block. So this would be like if you had variable viscosity and other stuff. And we're not going to talk about this today because we're going to discuss more about it later when we talk about multiphase flow. Um, this was just the transmissibility matrix. Um, this is a discussion on boundary conditions that I went over. Okay? So 